The three concurrent forces acting on the screw eye produce a resultant force Fr equals zero. If F2 is two-thirds of F1 and F1 is 90 degrees away from F2 as shown, determine the required magnitude of F3 expressed in terms of F1 and the angle theta. We do not know F1, we do not know F theta. We want to know, we want Fr to be zero. Fr is the resultant, that means we want F1 plus F2 plus F3, the vector sum of these three things, to be equal to zero. As soon as you say you want the vector sum of these to be equal to zero, the easiest way to do that is going to be to express them each in terms of Cartesian components. F1 is fairly easy. We know its angle. We can say that F1 is the magnitude of F1, whatever it is. We don't know what it is, but that's okay, times cosine 60 in the i direction and F1 sine 60 in the j direction. The vector F2, we can do somewhat, something very similar with this. But whereas the 60 degree angle we were given was with respect to the x-axis and we could just write cosine and sine, here it really does help to draw the triangle to make sure you get your SIGNs, sines, straight. So F2, the vector, will be F2, the magnitude, times cosine of 30 in the i direction, minus F2, whatever that magnitude is, times sine 30 in the j direction. Our third angle, again, it's helpful to draw your triangle so that you make sure you're doing things correctly. This is theta. F3 is your magnitude along the line of action of F3. So F3 in vector Cartesian form will be the magnitude of F3 sine theta in the negative i direction and F3 cosine theta in the negative j direction. Now we have our three forces all in Cartesian form. We can actually perform the vector addition. Add the i's, add the j's. The resultant will be the additions of the i's and the additions of the j's. This looks like F1 cosine 60 plus F2 cosine 30 minus F3 sine theta in the i direction and F1 sine 60 plus F2 sine 30, and remember this was a negative, minus F3 cosine theta in the j direction. Now to say that this resultant is equal to zero is to say that the x component is equal to zero and the y component is equal to zero. Think about it. If I told you that you were going exactly nowhere, then you're going exactly nowhere north and exactly nowhere east. Once we have this, we can write two equations in the two unknowns. You also want to remember a given that we have not made use of yet. F2 is two-thirds of F1. So let's make that substitution and write our two equations. Once you've simplified these two by plugging in the numbers that you have, you need to solve for F3 and theta, remembering that we're keeping this in terms of F1. The easiest way to solve an equation like this is to divide one side by the other. So take the left-hand side of this, of the first equation, divide it by the left-hand side of the second equation. Take the right-hand side of the first equation, divide it by the right-hand side of the second equation. What you end up with, if you do that, is the tangent of theta equals 2.02246. You take the arc tangent of both sides and you can show that theta is 63.690 degrees.
plug this back into either one of these equations and you can solve for F3 in terms of F1. F1 is 1.20185 F3 times F1. At this point you have to remember to actually answer the question. You want F3 expressed in terms of the magnitude of F1. F3 is 1.20 times F1 and theta is 63.7 degrees.